Fort Barnett Golf Club, County Dublin, Ireland. A championship links on a windswept peninsula facing the Irish Sea. <laughs> Match over 18 holes between Irish veteran Harry Bradshaw, former Ryder Cup player, and winner of the British Masters, Irish Open, and Irish Professional Championships. And Bill Casper Jr., former United States Open champion, Varden Trophy holder, and one of post-war golf's most consistent money winners. To take you through the match shot by shot, the legendary Gene Saracen, winner of every major title in golf. I'm George Rogers, on the scene here at Port Marnock, and this is Shell's Wonderful World of Golf, a series of international matches played on the world's most famous golf courses. This week, Port Marnock Golf Club, County Dublin, Ireland. Dublin, a city of grace and fascination, of historic legend and men of letters, is Ireland's hospitable capital. Independent of Great Britain since 1922, the Irish are a race of easy-going romantics and articulate charmers. Trinity College, founded in Elizabethan times and reconstructed in the gracious Georgian era, attracts students from all over the world. They can take away with them an education in Irish drama from the world-famous Abbey Players and a realization of the incomparable Sean O'Casey characters, complete with shawls, cloth caps, and mufflers who frequent the Dublin Keys. In downtown Dublin, the colorful shop windows cater to the tourists with Donegal tweeds, custom tailored to one's every whim, with sparkling Waterford glass to set off the finest banqueting table, with tasteful lace and linen for a thoughtful gift of lasting value. And on a more domestic note, to the Irish love of sport, which Dubliners can fulfill in their own vast Phoenix Park, the largest urban pleasure ground in Europe. Here there is every facility for recreation, from visiting the zoo with one's family, to thrilling to the excitement of a neck and neck cycling race, even to participating in the national sport of hurling, a rough and ready form of field hockey. About the only thing missing in Phoenix Park is a public links, but a feature of golf in Ireland is that it has never known a municipal course. The need for such a project is now apparent, with all 28 clubs around Dublin full to capacity. Port Marnock, established in 1893, typifies the growth of golf in the Emerald Isle. It has been a case of where there's a will, there's a course. The pioneers of Port Marnock had to come from Dublin by a tedious combination of rail, road, and sea transportation. And if the tide were out in the river estuary, they would even come by jaunting cart. Nowadays, there is fast road transportation from Dublin or the north for the club's 600 members and their guests. Port Marnock is true lynx land, sandy soil left behind as the sea has receded over thousands of years. Nature has fashioned the towering sand hills and fierce rock. Here to tell us something about the maintenance problems here is the greenkeeper at Port Marnock for the past 24 years, John Temple. Our only major problem here is the east wind, which dries our fairways, coupled with the lack of rain. We have sufficient supply of water laid onto our greens, but none onto the fairways. With occasional storms and high tides, our first tee on third fairway gets sprayed with the salt water, which burns the turf. But you can expect such things on a lynx like this. I guess that is the rub of the green. Port Marnock is as internationally known as the Blarney Stone, and almost every golfer who comes to Dublin makes the pilgrimage to this links. For the equivalent of $2 on weekdays and $4 on weekends, visitors can play 36 holes over one of the finest courses in the British Isles. Caddies range from $1.25 to as little as 20 cents for a sub-teenager, fondly referred to as a little chiseler, who will pull your clubs on a caddy cart. The former president of the ruling body of amateur golf in Ireland, the Irish Golf Union, and president of Port Marnock, Professor Pierce Purcell. We owe a tremendous debt of gratitude to the people who founded this club, who formed it out of a vast wilderness of sand, bents, and bracken, and brought it to the magnificent links which we enjoy today. In Ireland, I am very happy to say 
that we are the senior Gulf union of the four countries, England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. Our union is founded on the four historic provinces of Ireland, Ulster, Munster, Leinster, and Connacht. We all work together. We are absolutely clear of politics. Long may it remain so, and let us enjoy the golf that we do. Well, Mr. O'Sars, and your Irish eyes are smiling this morning. Are you happy with Port Marnock? I sure am. I waited a long time to play Port Marnock. You know, it's a typical seaside course, and if this wind keeps up, anything can happen around here. It can be murder. Gene Harry Bradshaw has a style that is quite unlike any of the American pros that I have seen play. Do you consider it effective? Well, the way he's built, it makes him swing fat. You know, he rolls his hands at impact. He keeps that ball very low into the wind. You're right about that. I think he hits the ball low as continuously as anybody I've ever seen play. These uh, weather conditions, Gene, how are they going to affect Bill Casper's game? Well, you know, these conditions are foreign to Bill Casper, but uh, he's like most American pros. He likes to play his shots right to the pin. But uh, he'll adjust his game. Oh, he's that fine a player. Uh, I know Bill doesn't go for too much practice. Let's see if Harry is ready. Harry, they tell me that you have shot this Port Marnock links eight times in 64. Are you hiding another one of those underneath that sweater? Well, I'd love to, George. I have another 64, but I had settled for a 72 in this uh, sweater. Uh -huh. Bill, I don't believe you've been to Ireland before. Was it worth the 6,000 miles the journey from California? Yes, Gene, it certainly was, because uh, I've never been here before, so uh, it's a place I've always wanted to see, and after playing several practice rounds on this golf course, I really enjoy it, and I'm looking forward to the match with Harry today. Well, fellas, I want to wish you the luck of the Irish. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gene. Well, best of luck to you, fellas. Gene, you've played golf here in Ireland before, right? Eh? Yes, I have, George. I was here about 28 years ago. I played at a nearby course, the uh, Carlo Golf Club. In those days, most of the Irish pros were in America. Fellows like Johnny Farrell, Mike Brady, and uh, quite a few others. And boy, they made it pretty rough for a little Italian boy like me. <laughs> well, you got off to a pretty good start. You mentioned some Irish names. I understand that uh, there are a few of those Irish lads up on the first tee waiting for something to get started. There's our referee, Jack Kelly, the captain of Port Marnock. That's Jack in the dark blue blazer. He is talking with Miss Hillary Frayne, a very lovely young lady who will be our official scorekeeper today. Also on the tee, I see Colonel Holmes. On the right, he is secretary of the Port Marnock Golf Club, talking with Mr. Willie Gill, honorary secretary of the Golfing Union of Ireland. It is a gray, overcast morning here on the Port Marnock links. Wind conditions rather mild for this particular course. It's a slight breeze blowing right to left across the first tee. By the way, in the British Isles, they use the term bogey, which compares with our American par. Lest you be confused, we'll be talking in terms of American par all day. That index number specifies where strokes are to be taken in match play. Uh, Billy Casper, who is between American tournaments, uh, has not had too much time to acclimate himself to the small ball. He'll be playing the large American ball. Harry Bradshaw will be playing the smaller British ball, generally thought to be a bit easier to control in the wind. And here come our two players up on the tee, Harry Bradshaw on the white cap, Bill Casper from Apple Valley, California, uh, who is bareheaded. And I'm meeting with Mr. Kelly, who has several local rules that he'd like to go over with the two players. This match over 18 holes, medal play under the new universal rules of the United States Golf Association and the Royal and Ancient Golf Club of St. Andrews, Scotland. And the players will be competing for $5,000. $3,000 to the winner, $2,000 to the loser. In the event of a tie, the prize money will be evenly distributed. There's the toss of the coin called by Billy Casper. Billy Casper has won the toss and will drive first, wishing Harry Bradshaw the best of luck there. The first hole is a relatively easy par four of 388 yards from the back of the 70-yard long tee. The foreshore forms an out-of-bounds hazard on the right, and there are traps right and left at the 200-yard mark. Hope Hill dominates the view down the left, but the only trap likely to come into play cuts into the front edge of the green on the left. Okay, Gene, we're all set. Right, George. This first hole is like most seaside links. The wind is coming from the right, and it will not give the players much trouble. It should be about a drive and a nine iron today. Billy Casper has hit a beautiful low fade down toward the right, which kicks down just short of the bunker, and I think bounced over the bunker and finished in the rough about 220 yards out. And that ball will be marked there by Bill's four caddy, 
uh, carrying the national colors of the USA. You know, this uh, hole here, I was surprised at that tee shot because if you watch Bradshaw here, he'll play a right to left one to take advantage of the wind. Well, that's exactly what he did. He hit a good right to left low hooking tee shot, which will hit and roll over to the safe left center of the fairway. And Bradshaw's off to a good start as his four caddy with the orange, white, and green flag, the national colors of Ireland, comes over to mark that ball about 250 yards out. Billy Casper was very lucky on this tee shot there. He pushed it to the right and just barely went by the bunker. He's standing way above his ball here, and he's using a seven iron with a crosswind coming from the right. It'll be very interesting to see how he plays it. Casper started the ball well out to the right, hit short of the green, is running up on the green, will finish uh, just about pin high, but all of 50 feet uh, from the pin. Pretty good recovery shot from there. Bradshaw hit a beautiful drive there. He has a good lie, and he's using an eight iron. He's about 130 yards from the green. Harry started that shot out well to the right of the flag. That's the natural pattern of his shot. Hits just on the front of the green. Rolls up toward the pin, and that is a very, very fine approach shot, about 18 feet from the pin here on number one. Billy Casper has about a 42-foot putt. He's sort of on a camel back there, and he has to putt to the left of the hole. I'm pretty sure that Billy sees that roll because uh, Harry Bradshaw called my attention to it. Pretty remarkable, Gene, that he was able to put it anywhere on this green from that line. You said it. Well, there's one of the greatest putters in the history of golf looking over the line on this very first putt here on number one. The speed should be almost perfect. It stops just pin high on the right. He missed it by about a foot. There's a very fine putt, Gene. It was. He's now going to tap it in for his four. And a par four for Billy Casper here on the very first hole of the Fort Monick Golf Club in Ireland. Harry Bradshaw has about an 18-footer. Well, that, that putter's seen a lot of putts, Gene. That's an old hickory shafted blade putter. You kind of like that one, don't you? Yes, that's a beautiful putter, but watch this stroke. Harry starts it up, 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 and he just did miss it on the left by about an inch. I thought for a moment he had that putt. So Harry will tap this in for a par four. And at the end of the first hole, both players have picked up par fours. Our match is all even. The second hole, a par four 368 yards long, is slightly dogleg to the left. A line from the tee is over the white stone to the right of Hoth Hill. The fairway narrows down to 35 yards at the 240-yard mark with severe rough on both sides. The long, narrow, two-level green is guarded in front by a fairway trap and on the left by pot bunkers. Casper, unaccustomed to the chilly climate, was feeling the cold. He didn't quite catch all of his tee shot, and he sent it 240 yards out in the rough on the right. Bradshaw, who grounds his club head in front of the ball on every shot from his drives to his putt, stood up to his ball. His low trajectory shot bore down the left-hand side. And it also headed for the rough some 235 yards out. Bradshaw found a heavy lie, and he took his nine iron. He hit behind the ball, and he caught the first of three pot bunkers on the left. Casper, who's known as one of the most relaxed players on the PGA circuit, went to his pitching wedge. His ball hit the right-hand corner of the green, kicked towards the apron, and finished on the upslope about 45 feet short of the pin. 
Bradshaw, 60 feet from the hole, had a good lie in the trap. And he played an excellent explosion shot, but his ball just failed to carry over the bank and stopped 30 feet below the pin. Casper faced with a very difficult putt, both uphill and side hill. Nevertheless, ran the ball up 18 inches from the hole to ensure his par four. Bradshaw knew this green inside out. He ran it up dead on line, but the ball stopped nine inches short. And he tapped in for a bogey five to go one over par and to trail Billy Casper by one stroke. your fondest dream of Ireland, it will come true, for Ireland is all you'd expect it to be. It's a land of busy modern cities and gentle green hills, a land where the river Shannon flows and solitary fishermen pursue the wily salmon. Ireland is ancient castles standing eternal guard over the countryside and lonely Norman towers gaunt and tall against the sky. It's a land of magnificent country houses and quaint thatched cottages with a sleepy dog on the doorstep. Ireland is music. The stirring, marching music of the pipes filling the air with the echoes of Irish heroes. And Ireland is the sweet, lilting song of the concertina, gaily playing the old reels for the dancers. This is the island of the old songs of the shamrock and the leprechaun and the wearing of the green. But there is a new Ireland here too, a proudly independent Ireland that looks not to the past but to the future. And a dynamic expression of that future can be seen at the free port of Shannon. In a bold new program, the government of Ireland has set aside 135 acres for the development of industry. Modern factories and plants have been built for foreign firms making products for export. As a further encouragement, the profits derived from export are tax exempt until 1983. Already, the program is so successful that thousands of new jobs have been created. And the economy of Ireland from wages alone is richer by half a million pounds a year. To keep pace with this new industrial growth, Shell now serves the industries of Shannon from this new depot at nearby Limerick. All the petroleum products needed by modern industry are now available here. And Shell, long a familiar name at Shannon Airport, is now proud to be a part of the new industrial Shannon, a part of the new Ireland. For the world over, this is the symbol of Shell's constant search for new products, new ideas, new ways to serve you better. The third hole here at Port Marnock is a par four of 388 yards. It's one of the finest holes on the links. It's a severe dogleg left with a tidal swamp on the right forming a lateral water hazard indicated by yellow posts. The left side is banked by a rough ridge stretching to the large green which is guarded by pot bunkers all around. Okay, Squire. Billy Casper isn't taking any chances with his left to right shot here. This is a dogleg hole and he's gonna play it two iron safe. Show you how quickly these fellows learn a course, Gene, with a driver in a practice round yesterday. He almost put the ball in the bunker short of the, uh, short of the green. He's, he's playing a real percentage here. Billy has played just about a perfect two-iron shot. What a beauty. He split the fairway with a little right-to-left shot. Wonderful shot, about 230 yards down the fairway. I don't think that you're going to see Harry Bradshaw playing anything safe here. He'll take his driver and try to put one around the bend to make the hole much shorter for himself. Well, 
he hit that right to left shot, carried it out into the fairway. He'll run right along the edge of the rough. It'll be close, but I think he's hit a pretty good tee shot. About 240 yards. After a well-placed two-iron shot, Bill Casper has a nice open eight-iron shot to the pin. He has to be very careful because the wind is directly in back of him. Billy starts that shot right down straight at the green, hits just short of the green, bounces, rolls up, is taking the natural roll in toward the pin. He has hit it almost pin high, about 14 or 15 feet away. There's a fine shot with the wind behind. Bradshaw with an eight iron. He has a sand trap that's a little in his way, and he has to favor the right side. Let's see if he plays his famous pitch and run, Gene. Hit that ball high, started it toward the right side of the green. It came in, hit short. It is running up to the pin, up to the pin, and by the pin on the right by a foot, and he is inside Billy Casper. That ball came in like it had eyes. That was a beautiful shot, wasn't it? Billy Casper has a 13-foot putt, a very straight one. You're watching one of the greatest putters in the game. Well, Billy needs this to go one under par, and of course, if he gets it down, he's really going to put the pressure on Harry Bradshaw. Yeah, watch him charge this putt. Oh, he hit that a little bit too firmly and missed the hole on the left, and uh, he's left himself a little one coming back. I don't think he's going to hurry with that. He's going to mark it. Well, here you are. You have a situation, George. Uh, Bradshaw has 11-footer. If he knocks this one in for a three, the other putt is going to be pretty hard. Boy, I'll tell you. One less turn, and that would never have gotten up there. He just coached that, and he's back now to even par through three holes as Harry Bradshaw. Now, Billy Casper needs this to uh, hold the match all even. That's right, and it's not an easy putt after your opponent hold a three. Billy gets it down, a par four for Billy Casper, a birdie three for Harry Bradshaw, and at the end of three holes here at the Port Marnock Golf Club in County Dublin, Ireland, Harry Bradshaw and Billy Casper both even par and our match all even. On Shell's wonderful world of golf. The par five fourth hole is a mere 460 yards long. Fresh from a birdie, Bradshaw missed his drive slightly and he had to scramble for his par five. Casper, on the other hand, hit a tremendous drive with a win back of him. He reached the green in two with a five iron and two putted for a birdie four to regain a one stroke lead. The fifth, another great par four of 407 yards with a completely blind tee shot over towering sand hills, has a narrow fairway nestling in a hollow, which leads up to a kidney-shaped green swinging unexpectedly round a mound on the right. The hole was highlighted by Bradshaw's second shot, which was really loaded with local knowledge. With a semi-blind shot from the right, he took a three iron to keep the ball low and hit the ball toward the mound. It rolled up, caught its second wind, and ran on down to within 15 feet of the pin. From there, he two-putted for his par four. Casper was 12 feet from the hole with a drive at a beautiful six iron. Trying for his second birdie in as many holes, Bill overshot by three feet. Disappointed at missing his three, Casper failed to concentrate on his return putt and carted a bogey five, both players now even par. The 586-yard sixth hole, a par five, is the longest hole on the course. And again, a white stone marks the blind drive. The narrow undulating fairway falls toward the rough on the right. The last 300 yards roll slightly uphill to an elevated green sloping from back to front. Traps and mounds on the right give a final sting to one of the toughest holes on the course. I want you to notice how uh, Brad Short stands up to the ball. He plays it right opposite his left foot, and he has a close stance because that enables him to bring the ball in from right to left. Oh, Harry hit that right down there where it can't possibly do him any harm. That's the best tee shot uh, he's hit thus far. A beauty. About 240 yards out. 
I haven't seen Casper play for a long time. Well, he's playing this safe again with a two iron. Well, that's pretty good sense here, Gene. Uh, this fairway falls to the right, and with his fading type of shot, he could put a driver right in the rough. He pushed that out to the right a little bit, and it's going to uh, stay out to the right. I don't know if he has that much fairway out there or not. That wasn't too safe, was it? Uh, not at all. <laughs> but uh, he's still out there better than 200 yards. Billy Casper's tee shot is about a foot in the rough, but not very bad rough, and he's using a three iron. It's very light, and he's going to play a safety shot. Ooh, he hit that shot fat. Uh, didn't get it as he meant, and I guess it was rougher in there than it looked. He's just missed a trap, and he'll be in the fairway. You know, there's a lot of loose grass above the rough here that catches the club on the way back. Bradshaw is using a two-wood. He has a very good lie. He certainly threaded that tee shot in a beautiful position. Well, he cut that ball and played it just perfectly. Started it off to the left and brought it right back into the middle of the fairway. A fine second shot by Harry Bradshaw. That gorse bush is a famous landmark here at Port Marnock. Fred Daly, a former British Open champ, leading in the Irish Open, put a second shot in there, took a nine on the hole, and lost the title. You know, this course is full of those stories. Bill Casper, after missing his second shot, doesn't have a particularly good lie, and he has a very hard third shot left. The wind's coming from left to right, and he's going to fade it in there. Billy hit a five iron, and you saw the sand fly. He had a very bad lie. And uh, he is has hit the ball well off to the right of the green and down. He is having his troubles on this hole. After two beautiful shots, Harry Bradshaw is now using his nine iron and looks pretty chipper because he's got Bill in a bad place. Well, there's that little uh, nine iron shot coming up and hitting on the front edge of the green, and uh, it stopped quite quickly, about oh, 13, 14 feet from the pin. Harry would like to have seen that run a bit more. Bill Casper missed three shots in a row, and he's 70 feet from the hole. He's got a very delicate shot here. Boy, he better get that pretty quick. He's got that face wide open to get the ball up in the air quickly. And he cut it up past the pin, still rolling, and he'll be a good 28 or 30 feet away, but a pretty good recovery shot. That's the best he could do there. Billy Casper lies four, and he's trying to hold this 25-footer for a five. He has a little break left to right, and the green is pretty fast. He has to watch the distance here, boy. 